Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast, we're going to talk today with Adam Weatherby. I'm Luke Torkelson, and we're going to discuss a classic Weatherby cartridge, 300 Weatherby mag. Adam, tell us a little bit about 300 Weatherby mag. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows about the 300 Weatherby. That's the cool thing about the 300 Weatherby. You know, so many times you always hear the story, oh, man, I know Weatherby. My dad, my granddad had a 300 Weatherby, you know. So, like, it's the biggest thing about 300 Weatherby is, I mean, it's been our most popular cartridge, like, for 75 years. And it's just it's just often dubbed the best North American big game yep. cartridge. When at a show or when friends ask me, like, what, what if I could get one gun? To do everything, what should I get? 300 Weatherby Mag. Yeah. Now, is there faster 30 cows? Yes. We make one. Yeah. The 3378. Mm -hmm. um, there's slower, more efficient ones. Yeah. But it is, that's why it's, it's just a great all-around ammo, you know, availability as far as any Weatherby cartridges. More people load them, ourselves and other people. You're going to find the most loads available. You're going to get the velocity uptick over the 300 wind mag. It's like you can get, you know, what, 165 to 200 plus grain bullets. Yep. Uh, so, you know, you come out here to Wyoming and hunt just, you know, everything. It'd be a little overkill for prairie dogs. A little. It'd still be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we shot prairie dogs last year with 6.5 RPM. Yeah. I think I've <laughs> shot prairie dogs with 6.5 300. I have too. <laughs> But, I mean, you come out here, antelope, whitetail, mule deer, black bear, elk, bring a 300 Weatherby, and just call it good. Is there a North American game animal you wouldn't use 300 Weatherby on? No. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be my preference if I was, say, hunting brown bear. Yeah. You know, grizzly. I think it'll uh, do the job, but yes. we make better But I would, I would just tools. use, yeah, yeah, I would use a heavier bullet. But yeah. it's not as if it wouldn't be great. So it it's just, yeah, super good all around. All around. Let's back up a little bit yeah. and talk about some history of the cartridge. So yeah. when when did that when did this cartridge launch? Was uh, well, I gotta look at my cheat sheet. Forty three. <laughs> I knew it was two years. How, how old were you when that launched? Right, negative a lot. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a twinkle in my grandfather's eye. Or not how that saying goes, but no. So so I mean. You know, the 270, uh, 257, really, and 300 were in that pre-Weatherby Incorporated era, which is technically 1945, September of 1945. So those right. cartridges were developed as my grandfather was wildcatting, and so uh, kind of pre the a formal establishment of our business. So they're older than our official business. Yeah. It, it is the most popular cartridge that we have, um, and what I think is really interesting about 300 Weatherby is for... 40 years, there was nothing faster. Like, it, it was kind of well ahead of its – well, a lot of Roy's stuff was way yeah. ahead of its time, but this yeah. one seems especially that way. Yes. No, true. It was the fastest for, I don't know, a long, 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 long time. When it launched, its competitors were a 30-30 win, which launched in 1895. <laughs> that feels kind of funny to say. Uh, 30-06, which came out in – 1906, 300 Savage in 1920, and the 300 H&H &H in 1925. Right. And the 300 Win Mag was not till 20 years later. Yeah. That's pretty wild to think about. Yeah. So you go, I wonder why it's so famous. We think of, why is it famous? Is it like the 300 Win Mag? It was ahead of the 300 Win Mag time. You know, so you have to just think of, you know, the, the high velocity uh, kind of mentality and philosophy is what my grandfather started this business with. And... You know, the 300, 257 are the two classics, obviously, that, that, that really kind of gave it its 
yeah, the whole allure for the Weatherby Magnum. Yeah, and it, when it when it launched, the, 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 its parent case is the 300 H and H. At the time, that was probably the fastest. Yeah, true. Yeah, and so mm-hmm. we, I'm sure the guys that were into ballistics and yes, killing things back then. You know, it, it, obviously the story resonated really well with a lot yeah. of people, or we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And then you know, when you when you think about it, it's like okay, so then we had really you know we have the 300 Remington Ultra Mag or Rum, the 3370 Weatherby, which is faster than the Rum. Uh, you know, now the 30 Nosler. There's a number that are in the faster 30 category, mm-hmm. um, but it doesn't. But you 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 do blow a lot of efficiency to get faster than the 300 Weatherby. There's definitely a lot of diminishing returns happening there. Yes. When yeah. you pass the 100 grain mark on the <laughs> powder uh, oh. there that you have to for the 3378, you're, you're, you are getting better speed, and the 3378 is the fastest. But, you know, it's uh, – you lose the efficiency there at the You'd end. You'd have to start getting crazy long mm-hmm. barrel lengths or something really weird that doesn't make sense to go right. to really mm-hmm. see a huge improvement. Sure. Um, do you have a personal experience with 300 Weatherby that um, was like a hunt or like huh. best yeah. game animal that you took with 300 Weatherby? You know, I'll take them sometimes on just classic hunts too because it's such a classic cartridge, you know. Um uh, I actually was doing a moose and elk hunt in in uh, in Canada. Took a three hundred Weatherby up there. Um, I remember I was doing a a film, and you always want to make clean kills on film. And I just have a lot of confidence in making yeah. clean kill shots with a three hundred Weatherby. Uh, you know, we just have a lot of I think accurate loads. You know, with it as well, which mm-hmm. is good. Um, you know, just a lot of consistency in our ammo, and so you know, it can push things out further. So I remember the. In 2017, I did an elk hunt in New Mexico uh, with the Hush guys. Shout yep, out to yep. the Hush guys. Yeah, I remember um, that one. Shout out. And uh, so that was fun. Shot a bull down there. And uh, so lined up on a bull on, the, I think, fourth day and got prone and was using the uh, 180 Acubond with the Vanguard Hush 300 Weatherby rifle. And uh, I remember got prone. It was 525 yards. And it was just an absolutely perfect hard shot at 525 yards on film with the hush guys. So I remember like just wanting something I was real confident in right. and, and there's just no guessing it's consistency that bonded bullet and AccuBond, you know, I'm a big fan of and that bullet combined with that caliber and that gun. I just, I don't know why that one always just kind of stuck out to me probably cause I've probably botched some shots on film too. <laughs> and so that one was always like, Oh yeah, I always, um, you know, shoot out that way that quick. <laughs> but um, it was one of those just kind of hard shots. The thing runs away. So I don't know why that one kind of kind of comes to mind. But it's something you can something you can count on. We load a lot of projectiles in 300 Weatherby. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite? <sighs> For what? Well, exactly. <laughs> you can't just <laughs> you can't just shoot one bullet. That's true. I mean, you know, as you well know, AccuBond has historically been one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also come to like the Swift Scirocco, which mm-hmm. is a similar design but had really good results. So it's a bonded bullet there, and so we're loading that. And I'm going to look to you because <laughs> during this ammo shortage the last couple of years, we've loaded and not loaded so many new SKUs in order to keep up with demand. If we can get projectiles, we're doing it. So Correct. you're going to have to keep me up to line. I'll it. try to keep we're you honest. We're currently selling it, but we are currently loading the 180 Scirocco. Swiss we are. Scirocco. Yes. Yep. We actually have some on the shelf right now. If you listen to this uh, podcast. Doubt it. No, we do. You what? could get on and buy some right now. No. True story. I'm going to buy them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 180 Swift Scirocco, phenomenal bullet, similar design. If you've liked the Acubon, Acubon has been a very hard bullet to find. Um, I believe we're getting some hopefully here pretty soon, going to be loading them again, yep. which is great. Appreciate that from Nosler. But if not, that, that Swift Scirocco bullet is a phenomenal bullet. Um, the, speaking of new bullets, the, the new hammer bullets we're loading. Yeah are pretty cool. You had some experiences with those. I shot an elk last year in Idaho with the hammer out of 300 Weatherby, mm-hmm. uh, the 180 hammer, 190 hammer, excuse me. We were still kind of playing with okay. the load at that point. Yes, and which we don't have the 190. We're though. not loading yeah. that one commercially, no. We're, we went with the 180. It's a little mm-hmm. bit better ballistically. Uh, I shot that elk with the 190, but, man, that bullet, like, opened perfectly. Yeah. I, I've been a little hesitant. Yeah. I'm from Texas. Yeah. And... I'd never hunted with an all copper bullet before. Mm-hmm. So I was a little nervous, but it, it couldn't have done better. Like oh. it was a perfect, like 
five star open mushroom. Yeah. In the hide of the opposite shoulder, right through five the heart. Five stars. Yeah, I mean, like the the petals were like just. So we'd give Hammer open. a five star rating. I would. Yeah, yeah, I would too. I'm I, I shot a mule deer, you know, as you well know, with it last year. It was actually a thirty three seventy eight, but it's still a thirty cal Hammer bullet, and it uh, did the same thing. It was just, it was an awesome. I didn't recover the bullet. You didn't recover yours, did you? I did. It was in the hide oh, of the opposite shoulder, like perfect. perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, mine passed through, but it was mule deer, smaller animal. Oh, I'm trying to remember yardage. I can remember what yardage was yours. Do you mine was uh, just mm-hmm. over 300 yards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think mine was 425 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But it's smaller animal pass through, but a one shot kill on the mule deer and uh, did great. So those are they're more expensive bullets, but they're really almost like a custom bullet. I mean, they're turned bullets on a they're lathe. Individually lathe know. turned. But yeah. they've really designed these. A lot of those are great for match, but not for hunting. But these bullets that Hammer are doing, which are made right up here in Montana. Um, I mean, it's really like a custom load. Our ballisticians love them. I feel like they're paid by Hammer sometimes the way they talk about those bullets. <laughs> they're working for me, <laughs> but sometimes I think they work for Hammer. But no, they're they're just shooting. They are so accurate, they consistent are. in loading. So that's just kind of a new mm-hmm. thing. If you haven't checked those out, we're we're offering Hammer in a few different cartridges now, Luke. Yeah, we're actually going to be adding more of those bullets uh, in the line. And I, now this will make me a liar to say all the ones that we're adding it to, but yeah. all of our main runners, we're going to yeah. be adding a Hammer bullet. I, mean, I like how you yeah. offset that seat so and say any errors. Yeah, I didn't want to lie. I sure as heck am not. But <laughs> check for the Hammer listings. And it, to be honest, we're, we're able to get those too. Um, you know, so that's that's really cool as well. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was really happy with the performance on that elk. And then mm-hmm. um, my, my favorite 300 Weatherby story is I had moose on my bucket list for a long time Mm -hmm. and uh Mm. you on this we went on moose at the same time right you had we're using a 338 rpm which is public at this point yes um still not available we're hoping that that is fixed soon yeah uh but i took 300 weatherby on that hunt and um one shot kill on yeah. the on moose what do you what bullet do you use i used a i used a 180 inner bond oh, yeah. because we couldn't get any acupons mm-hmm. it was we were yeah. into the, the pandemic bond shoots really accurate though the hornady it, inner bond it does it does really yeah. well again similar to the inner bond acubon Scirocco, similar design They're bullets bonded uh, bullet construction with a lead core yeah i mean in case anybody didn't know the 300 weatherby 180 hornady inner bond in a mark 5 carbon fiber barrel the carbon mark mm-hmm uh, has been our best shooting rifle we've and load combination we've had since moving to Wyoming in the last three years. It's the be- single best shooting. Yeah, and it's built. It's beat its own record like it's multiple got, times. It's got or two or oh three the record. I think we're down to 02 now. I think I'm we have like a, a royal flush of point oh two, oh three, <laughs> oh four, oh five. We might be missing one. Yeah. I mean that is one. It's one black hole, and obviously we use a. A, a digital thing to measure that as well. So I mean, it's it's yeah. it's pretty accurate. Um, so yeah, it does it does really well in that. So, yeah, yeah, that thing has been just an absolute tack driver. So yeah. um, and I've seen similar results personally with the hammer bullets. Back, mm-hmm. Not to go too much back to that, but yeah. uh, it, I've not had a, a three hundred Weatherby that hasn't shot yeah. lights out. So, but here's what people always say: they just think fast. They think three hundred Weatherby. And then, like, I feel like half the people recoil comes up in the conversation, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just because we're used to shooting Weatherby cartridges or whatever, but, I mean, you can shoot that in the backcountry TI, and if it has a breaker suppressor on it, it it's tame. Now, no break, no suppressor yeah. on a, on a well, backcountry titanium and 300 Weatherby, it's going to punch you. For sure. But I just have, like, these grown men that are, like, a lot bigger than me, and they, like, ask me questions, like, on things like that, and I'll be like, I don't know, go ask my wife. She shoots that and seems to have just a fine time. I don't know. My son, Tripp, <laughs> yeah. um, who oh, turned yeah. hunting age last right. season, mm-hmm. um, I was a little nervous for him to pull the trigger on his first big game animal, so I kind of wanted to maybe go a little over on yeah. the cartridge. So he shot his first ever mule deer with 300 Weatherby. <laughs> And he's 12 or he's whatever. He's 12. Yeah. And we had shot it previously to make sure, sure that it wasn't, you know, yeah. too much for him and he wasn't surprised. And I mean, he was like an inch group at 300 yards. And then he made a perfect shot on that and then another white tail deer mm-hmm. with the same gun and just absolutely made a perfect shot. And I was like, oh, dad, I didn't know why I needed to be worried about that because <laughs> he's a better shooter than me, apparently. But, uh, he he never once complained about recoil. He's mm-hmm. like, it's just fine. We were using a suppressor. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, 
that's more just he's kind of doesn't like loud noises so i think suppressors are good just to mm -hmm. get rid of the trigger anticipation or the the bang anticipation so absolutely so yeah, yeah that was awesome yeah uh, and so then obviously we've got 3378 that did edge out, yeah. um, which was introduced in 96. Yeah, late 90s, yeah. Off the top of my head, I'd say 96. Yeah, I think it's 96. And that's still the fastest 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's there's some Wildcat stuff, you know, but um, sure. from a production round standpoint, it still got the throne. Yeah, yep. Anything else you want to add, 300 Weatherby related? No, you know, you can go to a website, check out our ballistics. Obviously, you can read a whole bunch of stuff, a, a lot of places on it, but I know a lot of listeners probably have a 300 Weatherby and probably have a whole lot more stories than we even do of taking a lot of animals with the 300 Weatherby, which is cool. You know, it's it's legendary, I guess, for those of you that are looking for ammo, everybody's looking for ammo. We, uh, the of all the brass we're getting in this year, uh, Great point. I would say we are getting in twice as much 300 Weatherby breast than any other cartridge. Mm -hmm. Is that safe to say, I believe? Uh, yes. At least more. twice as much. Over. Yes. And so we are going to be loading a ton of 300 Weatherby this year. And yes. so, uh, yeah, so we will, we are continuing to do that. We, um, as I've said before, we uh, shipped out more ammo last year than we ever had before, and we're going to make last year look bad. So we are going to be shipping out far more. Um, we just got in several pallets today and i think next week we're getting in more pallets of brass we got powder we got primers we got bullets stuff's gonna happen yeah so, so for anybody that's concerned about hunting season coming mm -hmm. up yeah it's true. Uh, we we should be able to get you bullets cartridges before hunting season yeah we're gonna be shipping it yeah. early summer yeah in and, large quantities and just a note on that you know because as you as listeners would know we don't make the bullets Right. So we're, you know, depending on partners like a Nosler, Hornady, Hammer, Barnes, you name it, um, you know, we're, we're going to load what we can get as long as it passes our standards, uh, you know, for velocity, accuracy, of mm -hmm. course, the loadability, uh, quality, all that kind of stuff. So if it does, we're going to be putting it in there. And it is a time where if you always shot the 180 Acubon and you can't find it, then, hey, maybe give the Interbon or Scirocco a try or whatever that is and, uh, and do that. So when you say we're going to load a lot, we're not going to load all SKUs because if – we can't get everything. There's some bullets that yeah. are out years uh, that we've had on order for over a year. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so it, it may be if you're like, dude, I shot it for 15 years. It's just weird times. Mm -hmm. But there are some other good bullets, and sometimes you do that and can try it, and you might find a winner. So I think the same would be true on 300. Um, like even though Scirocco's you talked about, it's a great opportunity to try them. Yeah, so. and on, on the moose hunt that I went on, I used that 180 Interbond yeah. on a gun that had previously been sighted in for a 180 Acubon. Yeah. And so I went to the range, verified. I did have to make a very slight adjustment. Mm -hmm. The the shape of the bullet's slightly different. Yeah. BC is slightly different. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking, I think, not more than five shots, and I was super confident in mm -hmm. my setup again. Yeah. So um, you, you might have to make the switch. That's a great point. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the other thing, just an always reminder – is different bullets shoot different in every single gun. So, you know, sometimes trying a new one too, you might find that it's shooting more accurate than the one you previously liked, and that's what it really likes. I mean, who would have thought that one carbon mark really liked Interbonds, and it just ate them up and spit them out? Loves like, it. Who would have ever known? And so it's it's always worth giving it a try, and you may yet to find your most accurate, you know, factory load. You might be, so. per, you might be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, which also means that we will have uh, a good supply of unprimed brass this year. We will. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a hand loader and in the 300 Weatherby uh, situation, uh, we should be uh, well stocking the shelves with that, um, both online dealers and distributors. I, I think all of our so. back orders for that should be well satisfied by the end of May. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So good. Yep. Good. All right. Thanks for listening to, uh, to us talk about 300 Weatherby. Catch you next time.